Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we'll be talking about the spell Thunder Wave. More than that, it's like a big boom. Bob, I'm here today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thunder Wave, this is first level for bards and sorcerers and... And druids and wizards and tempest domain clerics and artillerists and armorers and genies and fathomless. Well, all right, you're ready for that one. Yeah, I got DD Beyond's a hell of a drug. It's got the whole list for me just to take a peek at. Great. All right, what does it do? All right, uh, Thunder Wave is like a... I, I think this might be the biggest trap of a spell that exists, but it is very fun whenever you get to work. So it's a first level spell that takes your action. It's a 15 foot cube that centers a face on you. So like you are in the middle of one of the faces of the cube and then directionally it affects that 15 foot cube area outside of that. Um, a 15 foot cube originating from you makes uh, creatures in that area make a con save. On a failed save, they take 2d8 thunder damage and are pushed 10 feet away from you. On this, if they succeed, they take half damage and aren't pushed. Additionally, unsecured stuff in the area uh, is pushed 10 feet away. In addition, it makes a very, very, very loud boom noise because it is a thunder wave. Um, what's, what are your initial thoughts on thunder wave? It, it's right. a popular well, spell, I think. My initial thoughts is that 15 foot cube things that originating from you, I was thinking that means you're at the center of the cube. Nope. No. You are inside one of the faces and the cube originates from there. So like, it's it's difficult to, to picture, but yes, you are centrally in one of the faces that the cube then originates out of. It like forms into existence this way. All right. Yeah, all right. It sweeps out from, but still, it could sweep out in all directions. That's definitely what a lot of people think it is implied to be. Um, from my recollection and how I've run the spell since I believe I read a tweet a very long time ago from Jeremy Crawford, uh, I believe it was like they doubled down and said it originate the, the plane originates from you and there's a box that comes out, which makes the spell slightly better than if it were just yeah. like a 15, uh, like a, a square around you because it's um, way better. You have been more finite control typically of that area. Um, it being out around you is like the best oh panic button, but you can always just be like drop on my back and then throw it up and then everything gets blown up around you anyway. So it can still function as that if you need it to. You just got to be willing to drop prone or I guess do a squat. Um, in any case, uh, we're very off topic. But yes, that is how the area of Thunder Wave is calculated, I believe. I'll, okay. I'll try and Google well, it real fine. fast while I'm talking. But. My initial... Uh response as you asked was uh i like it i think it's cool it does a little bit of damage but uh i mean the the movement thing like we've said in other movement spells if you got something if you got something else set up for you to push somebody into or like a cliff or a ledge or something that's cool but also if you just uh need people to back off then uh yeah, it buys you a chance to run or something that's where I have a problem with it. Uh-oh. You've fallen for my trap card. Oh. Thunder Wave sounds kind of like a free disengage. It It's like, oh, I'm a wizard. There's three orcs on top of my face killing me with great swords. I'd rather them not be there anymore. I'm going to Thunder Wave them away, and then I will be free to run and do as I please. Uh, the unfortunate reality of that is... Around half of them, slightly less than half of them, won't move at all. And then you have not disengaged at all. The 10 foot push does not matter in the, the slightest bit because you're still taking attack opportunity. Most of the time, a combat orc is just going to grab you and be like, You're not going anywhere. What do you think you're trying to run for? And then the, his friends are going to continue to kick the shit out of you. Um, even incompetent orcs are going to take a swing at you and deal you more damage. You will then move your speed. The orcs that pass the save will then move their speed and keep kicking the crap out of you. And the orcs that didn't, will dash or in this specific case of orcs use their uh their racial trait uh, or monster trait whatever it's called uh and get up to you because they're attacking a hostile creature uh and you will have functionally moved you and the fight back 30 feet and that's the real outcome the thunder wave mostly reproduces is mostly when you thunder wave whatever you're fighting not all of it's getting knocked back in the best case scenarios like if you want to hit eight or nine creatures with this certainly a few will pass and then if you manage to still get away from them, they're really easily just able to catch up, even if they're spending a dash. Most of them don't even have to. It is... What, what, what do you mean most of them don't have to? I mean, you, you have this racial trait with orcs, but 
I mean, there are other creatures. There are other creatures. There are things like zombies. There are smaller things. In the low tiers, ideally, what Thunder Wave will do is kill creatures that would be able to keep up with you anyway. The creatures that would keep up with you anyway are the ones that fail the save and match your speed. We'll have to spend an action dashing. That can be novel. It is hard to get it to work the way that many people want it to. And the reason it's hard to make it work the way that people want it to is because, again, often the circumstances where you're going to be like, crap, knock these three creatures back and move. Oh, now two of them have to dash. This is great. I only took one attack of opportunity. The net resource gain there, then having then taken an attack of opportunity, is still only a single attack. That's not really amazing. It's not horrible, but it's also in a very niche circumstance. That's like saying the average best use case for that people want to happen. The I knock three creatures back. I'm in the camp that that isn't even that great of an outcome. Taking an attack opportunity to mitigate one creature's attack and make it dash, not that useful. What if you're, what if it's, I mean, this is an area of effect spell. Ideally, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're hitting a bunch of people or, well, maybe not a bunch, but uh, a significant amount of people then, or, or opponents. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can take one hit. But sure. maybe you can't take five hits. Here's, again, my next issue is, <laughs> if you're taking one hit, the rules in, as far as attacks go, if, you're a, if you have a DM that's competent in playing tactical combat, which I'm not saying, I'm sorry, competent is definitely not a right word to use there. If you have a DM who's really engaged in tactical combat, if you have a DM that really enjoys making monsters make plans to try and kill you, they will almost certainly know that in place of any attack roll, any weapon attack roll, any melee range attack roll, you can attempt to grapple a creature. That includes whenever a creature leaves your threat range as part of an attack of opportunity. You can replace that attack with a grapple. And if you are grappled, you have not done anything meaningful to get yourself into a safe area. You are now just going to get the crap kicked out of you again. Like I said prior, in this example with three orcs, let's say, let's call them just three bandits because bandits don't have any special actions to that effect. Okay. You knock two of them away. The third one, as the dinky little wizard, outstrengths you and grapples you when you try and leave instead. Your speed is zero. You're still stuck there and all the next series of attack rolls still keep coming. Now, the floor there is you're still doing 2d8 or half to everything. The floor there is still fine. But if you're in that fine space, why not cast Burning Hands and do more damage? <laughs> that is where I think Thunder Wave ultimately lands. It'll very often feel fine because the floor is 2d8 damage. I think having DM'd for the spell a lot, and I mean a lot, I would go as far to say I don't think I've had a party that has played one to five, that has not had at least one character with Thunder Wave on their sheet in the last, like, six years. Someone always has Thunder Wave. I think I have seen it successfully eat two or three dashes, at the best case scenario, like, twice. It's not happening often. Most of the time, you're having a bad time, and you shouldn't expect Thunder Wave to be a disengaged tool. That yeah. is, I think, where I want to start with Thunder Wave. That doesn't mean it's bad. I feel like it's it's not great against DMs who've really got some kind of a vendetta against Thunderwave. <laughs> and well, have spent also, countless hours thinking of how to thwart players who use it. Listen, it's a it for the base level. If you know that you can make an attack as a reaction to grapple somebody, you nullify the bulk of the meaningful knockback for disengagement. That is all that it really mitigates there. There's also the consideration. I think this is the way more practical reason why Thunder Wave doesn't tend to be that powerful. The DM, they don't want to drop 14 creatures on the wizard. They don't want to put a whole bunch of baddies specifically to make the wizard use Thunder Wave. That's not the objective. The objective isn't to throw six creatures that they have to knock away and run from. That's like a worst case scenario, everything's gone to shit kind of moment. And at that point, you really just want to be expedition retreating. You really just want to be doing some way to get out of dodge faster than using Thunder Wave to try and also do damage and have that little back and forth. Because if you're in a situation where that's likely to be happening, again, the bulk of DMs aren't trying to hit you with six monsters. They're trying to hit the front line with six monsters because of how they get to feel cool. And they're trying to hit the wizard with a couple little sneaky people in the back. They're trying to get the wizards with a couple little ranged duelist combatants, which leaves this not as a great defensive option. All right, how about this? The wizard mm -hmm. runs to the front lines to thunder wave a bunch of uh, little foes. And uh, having done that, mm -hmm. you know, the on on the other on the front line, people's next turn, they get uh, get in the, get in between the wizard and uh, whoever's left. Yeah, I I think 
offensively, Thunder Wave is way better. And I think that's a good example. Offensively, you can do some cool things where you're splitting up groups. If you're playing with flanking, that can be a bit iffy because, you know, they, you can get yourself flanked for no reason. But there can be some cool tactical engagements with this. But also, like, this is a tool to push things. And we have talked at length about a variety of spells that exist that like things getting pushed into them. Cloud of Daggers at a second level spell. Iconic Wizard Duo. You throw down a Cloud of Daggers, then Thunder Wave something into it. It takes 44 damage going in and 44 at the start of its turn. That's great. Tack on the 2d8 Thunder damage and you are a very happy camper. Now granted, that's based off them failing to the Thunder Wave saving throw and you probably want to hit more creatures with that. But in that scenario, the spell is definitely more useful than Burning Hands. Thunder Wave is a spell that I think you want to, you, I think you need to want to use it proactively for it to feel good. And I think if you want to use it proactively, you're going to want parties that care about positioning a lot or tools of your own or tools of another caster that you can get more mileage out of it than just the 2d8 damage. If you can ever get more damage than 2d8 damage out of this, it's one of the best first level spells in the game. That takes some setup that's kind of hard and that's in a tier where it's like, okay, they're starting to get better, more powerful things to be doing with upper level spell slots and my actions are getting a little bit more costly. There becomes a... It, this starts to feel like a, a cheap cantrip-like spell that you bust out as a, okay, I need to push things into this. Great. I'll use my third level spell to make this big wall of fire. Then I thunder wave them into it with a cheap little first level spell. It feels good. Let's see. Can I think of anything else? All right. What? All right. You, you mentioned exp expeditious, however you pronounce that, retreat. Mm -hmm. What level is that? First level spell. First level spell. It just spell. gives you uncanny action or uh, the rogues uh dash for a bonus sure. action but as as the wizard who has to prepare these maybe yeah you, know, you, 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 you are you going in thinking oh no i'm probably gonna need to to bail out now or, or are you wanting to prepare something more offensive so i think as far as prepared lists go wizards have a robust quantity of spells in their spell book um, most of them, pro wizard tip, should be rituals. Anything you're not casting, ideally, like not regularly preparing, should just be a ritual spell because then you have access to it anyway. Um, but if it's not a ritual spell, if you have other things spinning around your spell that you're, you're choosing to prepare from, I you normally have a damage spell at the highest level that you want it. Normally, that's like a fireball, a burning hands, a, a even a scorching ray, or a uh, like um, you could do a, an ice knife for first level is another comparable example. Um, I don't think you really ever want Thunder Wave and one of those on your early level sheets for the reason you just kind of pointed out. I think Thunder Wave is more likely to take up the damage slot than it is the utility slot. Because utility slots tend to be a little bit... I, I find players get a lot of enjoyment in finding creative ways to use cool spells. They take Expeditious Retreat because it fits a fantasy of theirs. It fits the, the mold of the character they're looking to play um as the you know super speedy zippy uh lightning like uh jittery wizard for example or if you're doing something like fog cloud you are uh you can go from stoner to um you know smoke bomb ninja kind of aesthetics to make uh fog cloud work like there's a lot of variation that you don't like burning hands is always gonna look like a flamethrower for the most part thunder wave is always gonna look like a big burst of thunder for the most part these are less i i don't want to say they're less identifiable to a character type but they're not something they're normally something that's like i have my one damage spell that's enough i don't need more than that i don't think thunder wave is the best one of them on most character sheets because most character sheets don't really care about setting up areas and bouncing people into them over and over again most character sheets don't care about super nitty-gritty tactical decision making and positioning and for that reason i think thunder wave probably doesn't belong on your sheet if you're already taking something like burning hands and instead of taking thunder wave then you should be taking something like expedition retreat or some other useful defensive option that also fits your aesthetic or gives you a different range to explore outside of combat or even exploring combat different utility option different um spell that is more consistently going to affect the world the way you want it because thunder waves very iffy at affecting the world the way you want it compared to just being a damage spell so would you would you say then that um this is a better spell to take at higher levels when you Absolutely. have yes yeah all right this when you've got a, other stuff to 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 uh set it up with yeah a, a great supplemental spell if you're if you're a wizard that fight or like a druid druids i think very often will take this because the rest of their first level suite feels really bad um and as a druid this is a perfectly fine it will do 2d8 damage in an area and that is better than almost anything else you get if you just want to do damage in an area so that's not going to be unreasonable for the druids out there in the world bards are kind of in the same bucket where it's like i don't really have better damage spells thunder wave is the best i got 
great, go for it. It will do the job you want it to. It'll be a bad burning hand in that instance with a little bit of upside now and then. If you are a wizard or one of those characters playing at a higher level and you're like, I have been setting up balls of fire, I want a better way to admit it, like interact with it, Thunderwave is a really cheap option to do that. Um, I think it's very likely you'll already have had it because like I said, I so many people take this spell um, and it might be like a fun discovery down the road to be like, oh yeah, I have that first level spell that I cast like four times this game, but now I can throw people in my wall of fire. That's sweet. Um, and that'll pop up and be a pretty cool little interaction. But yeah, I think most players, most characters, especially wizards, especially sorcerers, ones that have access to better damage spells. This is something I think you want to think about whenever you are playing the wall sorcerer, whenever you're playing the the uh, giant cloud of uh, the uh, cloud kill kind of fantasy that you want to get people in and out of a damage space. Anything to say about the big boom? It's lo- almost exclusively a downside. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, hey, guys, the fight's over here. Mm-hmm. This one's out there to all your DMs. Uh, if you do have players that like casting Thunder Wave, you're going to have to go through a, a moral battle because on one hand, it's not that great. It's fine. It's fun to use. It's a bunch of damage in the area. It knocks people away. It's a cool fantasy, right? I get it. Uh, but it does make a very loud noise, and it's very easy to say, yeah, the bears heard that. <laughs> <laughs> They're intrigued. The The warring party is like, oh, there's a wizard over there. We just heard it cast Thunder Wave. Everyone knows the sound of a Thunder Wave because everyone gets it. So, um, yeah, it's largely, it will ruin more stealth missions than you'd expect. There will be a there'll be a great number of silly encounters you'll have where someone will entirely omit that last line of text. They won't think about, in addition, unsecured objects are going to blow back and you make a big boom. People will be like, yeah, that this is 2d8 damage and knocks everyone back. Who cares what else the spell says? I cast Thunder Wave in the super secret stealth mission. And then every guard in the tower hears it and every single person that is around the area is like, what made that large explodey sound? And now we have a really fun escalation of the heist because uh, the idiot sorcerer was like, this is fine. I'm just going to blow these jail bars out and no one's going to know the difference. I was thinking the same thing. Well, I mean, it's a different spell, but knock. I mean, it's the last thing you want when you're trying to pick a lock, you know? Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Yeah. Ah, but we will get there eventually. Uh, anything else about Thunder Wave? I don't want people to think I hate it. I don't hate Thunder Wave. I just think too many <laughs> people take it. And you you really, didn't, I think you should have a reason to put Thunder Wave on your sheet. I don't think Thunder Wave should just find its way on your sheet because it's your damage spell. Now, after everything you've said, I wouldn't take it for damage. I wouldn't take it to retreat. I'd just take it because I, I think it's cool. I, that's the best reason of all. Boom. Yeah. And I think that's the reason like I see it as often as I do. It is. I agree. It's a cool looking effect. All right. You got our uh, rating? Yeah, three out of five. Three out of five. Yeah. Um, no, I'll agree with you there. All right. Well, I guess that was Thunderwave. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.